about time. What's going on? Yo. Yo. Rumor Report. Rumor Report. This is the Rumor Report. Talk to him. With Angela Yee on The Breakfast Club. Well, R. Kelly has been found guilty of racketeering, including acts of bribery and sexual exploitation of a child, along with separate charges of sex trafficking. He faced a total of nine counts, mm-hmm. and he's been found guilty. So, What does that mean? How much time does he face? He faces decades, and by the way, he still has legal battles after this. In the Northern District of Illinois, he faces more federal charges, including child pornography and obstruction charges. He also faces criminal charges in Minnesota for two counts of engaging in prostitution with a minor and Illinois state charges for aggravated criminal sexual abuse. And he has pleaded not guilty to all charges. He does deny any wrongdoing. An attorney for R. Kelly also said they're considering filing an appeal and that they're disappointed in the verdict. But his sentencing is scheduled for May 4th. And the people around him should be charged, too. The people that allowed that to happen, seen it happening and and helped him, they they should be charged as well. Because he didn't do this by himself. I'm sure his staff, his people... His management team, like whoever was around him and allowed that to happen, if they allowed that to happen, they should be charged as well. All right, so we'll keep you updated on what's happening with R. Kelly. Who I don't know what was about to go down with that trial. All right, now Real, Will Smith is on the cover of GQ magazine. It's a very great in-depth article. If you have a chance to read the whole thing, you should. It's like 14 pages long. But amongst the things he talks about, um, he talks about making the movie Emancipation. And he said, I've always avoided making films about slavery. In the early part of my career, I didn't want to show black people in that light. I wanted to be a superhero. So I wanted to depict black excellence alongside my white counterparts. I wanted to play roles that you wouldn't give to Tom Cruise. And the first time I considered it was Django. But I didn't want to make a a slavery film about vengeance. He said emancipation is different. He compares it to more apocalypto than 12 Years a Slave. Mm -hmm. Uh, In addition, uh, the writer is talking about how he spoke to Will Smith, his collaborators, and his friends, and he says that uh, they kept saying that Will Smith is in a great place and that he's centered, deliberate, and even spiritual. He said, the idea is I spent the first half of my life gathering, 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 and now the second half of my life is going to be giving it all away. And that he also talks about making movies like King Richard. You know, he plays Richard Williams, who is Venus and Serena's father. And according to Serena Williams, she said that his portrayal was so convincing that there were moments that she had to remind herself that it wasn't actually her father on screen. All right. He also has his memoir, Will, which is going to be hitting bookshelves in November. And they're saying the whole thing is very unvarnished. And the whole journey of writing that book, he's wanted to do it for a few years. And the team reached out to Mark Manson, who's the author of The Subtle Art of Not Giving a F, while Will Smith was filming Gemini Man. And he said, an hour later, I'm on a private jet. That's what uh, Manson said. He said the whole thing was surreal. But he also said that he didn't want any publicists coming in saying, you got to take this part out. You can't ask about this. He doesn't want to talk about that. It had to be all on the table. So they spent a few days on the Cayman Islands getting to know each other and brainstorming. And, you know, they said, I've, according to Manson, Will Smith said, I spent my whole career hiding my true self from the world. I want this book to show people who I really am. And he wanted to totally destroy the, the clinging to Will Smith, trying to separate the image of Will Smith from who he actually is. And then he also talks about the violence that he saw his father inflict on his mom while growing up. He said that defined who he is today. And he remembered freezing, too scared to do anything, as his uh, father punched his mother in the side of the Mm. head. And so he said for decades he saw himself as a coward, and his desire to please people, to entertain the crowd, to make us all laugh, is rooted at least in part in the belief that if he kept everyone, his father, his classmates, his fans smiling, they wouldn't lash out with violence at him or the people he loved. So it's a lot um, in this. He talks about his first marriage. He talks about... um, I want to see a movie. I mean, if you really think about Will Smith's life and where he came from, a kid from Philly that that was rapping that some thought was corny, some thought was cool, and uh, started doing The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, and he was never an actor. He never trained for it. He has to memorize his lines. If you look at the early Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, you would see him saying other people's lines, so he knew where to say and how he became this huge movie star. And it's, it's just a lot of inspiration because... You know, he really came from nothing, just a kid from Philly with a dream, and he's he surpassed so many di- different things, man. He's an inspiration. Every time I look at Will, I'm like, damn, that's inspiration. And I saw there were a lot of quotes that people were putting up, and so one of the things that they talked about is how he wanted to date a harem of girlfriends and have 20 women that he loved and took care of and all of that. He said it seemed like a great idea. He met with an intimacy coach, and 
some of the women that he named specifically, Misty Copeland, Halle Berry. Mm -hmm. But he said what she was essentially doing was cleaning out his mind, letting him know it was okay to be who he was. He said it was okay to think Halle is fine. It doesn't make me a bad person that I'm married and I think Halle is beautiful. He said in his mind, his Christian upbringing, even his thoughts were sins. And so he realized that that wouldn't work out when he played out in his head, but that's what the intimacy coach helped him learn. And he also talked about his uh, period of non-monogamy in his marriage with Jada and how she didn't want a traditional wedding ceremony, but he did, so she gave in and all the compromises that she had to make, big fights that they had, and things like that. So read the whole article. It's really an amazing, amazing I can't article. I read this book and all this article, yeah. Yeah, and he talked about how Jada never believed in conventional marriage, and she had family members that had an unconventional relationship, so she grew up in a way that was very different than how he grew up. And it's written by Wesley Lowry. It's for GQ Magazine. It's the cover. So we want to shout out to Wesley Lowry, who wrote this amazing article and did this great interview with Will Smith, where it really feels like he's, you know, telling who he really is. And and one thing I would say about Will, too, I, I met him a couple times before, you know, before he knew who I was and just, you know, happened to see him around. And he's always been the same, just nice, pleasant. Doesn't matter how much money he made, how big of a celebrity he was, he's always been the same. And you don't see that with a lot of celebrities. He's not an ass. He's not disrespectful. He's not nasty. If he has security around, he'll still stop and talk. And you don't really see that too much. So all right. salute to Will After Smith. we interviewed him, he called all of us individually to say thank you. Yeah, he did. Yeah, absolutely did. Black, though. But. Mm, yeah, black all right, number. well, that is your rumor report. Yeah, he wants y'all to have his number. <laughs> he, nice, but he, he ain't that nice. He ain't that nice. He ain't, don't, don't be calling me. All right. Well, up next is Donkey of the Day. Now, Charlemagne is out, so if you want to give somebody Donkey of the Day, call us up right now. Your mama, your your daddy, your baby mama, your baby daddy, your grandma, your, your boss, your work. You never know. Sometimes mom deserves Donkey of the Day. All right. So whoever it is, call us up right now. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. Good morning.